Okay, um, welcome everyone and uh, welcome all the panelists. Today, the panelists, we have uh, Rachel, uh, Alicia, Ben, and Kendra, and uh, David will not be able to join us today. Uh, I will be the facilitator for tonight, and then uh, next week will be someone else. So tonight, uh, the main topic we'll be discussing is how would one um, figure out what field of study to study and, and what university to apply to, which country to go to, and how that would lead to potentially your future job or not. <laughs> so, so that is the discussion topic. Um, so maybe briefly, I will go around the panelists and ask them uh, some question and, and we'll see. And, and you guys feel free to jump in to ask question or type in the chat. Janice, can you help me uh, monitor the chat? So if you see people pop out there with question, uh, you, you can interrupt me and ask the question, okay? Is that okay, Janice? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, so maybe we'll do the rounds. Uh, we'll start with uh, Kendra. Um, so this is the question. Uh, how did you select, I guess you were in the US, so not what country to go to, but how did you select the university that you're going to attend? Uh, yeah, and give us some background. So this is a little bit of a long story, and I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Um, I had originally wanted to go to school to major in art so I was primarily looking at like small Christian universities where I could major in art so I was going to do um, either like graphic design or like some kind of more traditional art um, and so I was looking into that and trying to like figure out where I wanted to go to university I was looking at Houghton College which is where David and now Esther say are going to be going um, and so I was, I had applied there. I had gotten like a really good scholarship. I was all kind of set to go there. And then um, I had an internship in Taiwan for two months and had decided that I really liked um, travel and like uh, missions work and like that kind of thing. And um, was really interested in like uh, different cultures and uh, that kind of thing. So I um, then, was looking at Nyack College, which had like an intercultural studies major, which is kind of like a mixture of uh, like missions work, but also just like um, cultural competency and like how to like uh, be culturally aware and um, interact well. Like it would even be good for like international business. Like it just was like skills to like know mm -hmm. how to traverse uh, cross culturally. So I. Um, ended up going there because of that <laughs> i see I so 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 you 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 actually started with uh the field of study that you're interested in and then from mm -hmm. there you look for uh certain university that fit that category you mentioned a little little bit that you you kind of you were pretty specific what size of call university you're looking at and mm -hmm. And you were looking at also only Christian colleges. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you 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 try to narrow down the choice because in the U.S. Um, yeah. there's just <laughs> so many university. Um, yeah. So it's, it's it's really hard. It's not like Malaysia or some some or even UK yeah. where there's limited. Here it's like hundreds, out, hundreds, hundreds thousands. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So I really wanted a smaller school where I could like get to know our professors because in a big school like that wouldn't necessarily be a possibility. Mm -hmm. um, like a lot of in larger schools, like it's not even the professor sometimes grading your work. It's like the teacher's assistants. Mm -hmm. um, like you, even when you like respond to the teachers and or the professors and stuff, it's like their assistants emailing back. So they're pretty much just there for the lecture. Mm -hmm. So I really able to get to know my professors like it was great like at NIAC like we would go over to my professor's house for dinner and it, yeah. it was really nice to like build a relationship with them okay um, well, I mean I see the value in both ways so yeah so so what is what is a small university like to you um, I would consider like under 5,000 students in total all four years right 
Okay. So about thousand over students per per class. Yeah. Roughly. Okay. When Nyack only had like eleven hundred total. Um, I think right. Um, it was maybe like small. the undergrad. Yeah. Yeah, undergrad was about eleven thousand, or that, no, not eleven thousand, eleven hundred students. Okay. Back. So it's very small. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, ben, why don't you go next? How about you? How did you? Yeah. Yeah, like so the I think the main actually David's on the David can join us now. He's actually a Dalin now, so he'll say he'll share something too. Um the the main reason of uh, for me to choose where I went was mainly because David was in New York. So I decided, oh yeah, I want to be in that area. Mm -hmm. And I picked the field like originally it was just business administration. So more general, because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do yet. And I wanted to, I guess see what my options are and i actually added on a math degree too so i was double majoring then after like i think my second my during my third year i actually switched it to more accounting so more focused and because I, I didn't think accounting so i guess i'll share about accounting because i'm doing tax accounting or tax consulting now like mm -hmm. choose accounting right away because in malaysia i was thinking oh accounting is just you sit in your cubicle in your computer and you facing your computer the whole day i mean it's generally true but but as i've learned like in my field of course i'm i mean i i i chose tax because it was the only option available and and the only viable option to stay in the u.s you know like like to work because being an international student two years ago like not say you're desperate but like you you just take what what you can get then and i'm sure uncle Chun can understand that like like when as you you were getting your applying for different jobs or getting job right. first like get a job and it's a, it's a decent company you you want to just stay with it because it's just easier for immigration and that was part of the reason why i stay you know and right. and i would say a part of of um of the reason why i switched to accounting was my professor and because i'm i work as a ta to the um head of the business department and she i call her like my academic mom then because i guess one of the great things about small schools like if you build a relationship they can they can be your mentors for life and friend friend for life and she convinced me to like persuaded me to say hey like ben i know accounting is not really your thing but like look at what my son did and and he's not doing accounting per se but like it is it, definitely a stability as like like a, a focus then like like if you have an accounting degree like yes it can be like a mundane boring job but but there's so many fields out there you can branch out to like different financial fields mm -hmm keeping you know you can like like it's better than a business degree and because sometimes I mean, unless you want to go to finance or investment banking that's a different whole new field right but in general like at least that can take you out the door versus if you do a general business you're not even uh, focusing on marketing or financing like finance stuff so mm -hmm. or economic, right so i think that's the main reason why i chose it and and i think it just it just and the math degree really helped because it it, it gave me like in the u.s but for more specifics, like if you do a STEM major, like science, technology, engineering, or math, like it gives you like two more years to work. So it was just like, like the reason why I chose it, not because I really wanted to do math. I enjoy math, but it was because I wanted to graduate longer with my friend, you know, like I got out because I, I could finish university in three years, but I was like, okay, let's, let's add this degree so I can finish with you. But he ended up transferring to a different <laughs> <laughs> So I'm like, I, I'm like halfway through the program. I'm like I'm not gonna like waste the time and money, right? right. So I just finished it. But that's Great. that's the I think it's just um, like like practicality, just the practical yeah, just practical side of it, and probably stability too. And and I think just the way God let like God directed my life and 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 people around me like like really supported me and mm -hmm. got it, yeah. Can I can I ask you a follow up question, Ben? Uh, mm -hmm. You you also you mentioned that you knew that you're going to study business, yeah. In general, uh, how did you end up knowing that? Okay, so I would say when I was, I guess, like when I like between like okay, my high school age or my secondary age, and maybe around fifteen to eighteen, like. I was asking myself questions where like, okay, what do I feel like I'm interested in or strong at or what? So it, it was crazy. Like it went from 
like more health science side, like physical therapy. Then it went to like hospitality industry. Then it went to like maybe serving a ministry. Today I find like okay, the the core themes like really interacting with people then, and and I I think I was really interested in studying ministry, which is nothing wrong. Like 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 then I think um, different mentors and spiritual leaders were like introducing the idea of like tent making. Then how like in in our global like environment in the world now with, with the church and, and how we can position ourselves like I think tent making was the model and I think that's why I chose business because it's general enough but at the same time like to 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 serve people in like in in the markets marketplace like I think that was like where I think God was leading me at the end and I'm like okay I'll just choose business because it's not too focused like hospitality industry like like look at COVID right who would have expected that COVID would happen and that really hit the hotel industry so hard right and yeah. so that's yeah. the main reason why I think this we'll, we'll, we'll get to the, the job later because Ben yeah. actually graduated just in time found his job just in time to beat COVID right yeah like yeah. okay but we'll get into that later so we go to <laughs> later part <laughs> interesting uh, we go to David first because I'm a little bit worried that his connection <laughs> situation uh, Alicia and Rachel you don't mind huh? okay David are, are you there yeah I'm here okay uh, so the question is this how did you select what country to go to and and how did you pick the university to go to and does that relate to the field of study that you you end up in mm -hmm. yeah so for myself um I went to the art school just for high school for four years. And so a natural extension of that was to sort of go to an American university. I did try to apply to other universities um, like um, Hong Kong University for their medical program. Um, but I didn't get in. And I think in many ways, like just the degree didn't translate to other places like Australia or even Malaysia. And so, um, yeah, so that's sort of why I chose the U.S. Um, and then in terms of the university, my mom like really wanted me to go to Christian university um, just because sort of at the time, and I think even still, um, U.S. universities can have a reputation of being party schools. And so <laughs> parents can be a little wary about that, which is fair. Um, I was actually like not too happy about that initially because I wanted to study science. Um, and I knew that like Christian universities have a sort of um, shaky relationship with science at times, um, <laughs> especially the biology field. Um, you know, there's just certain tenets of biology that they just don't like, and so they just choose not to teach it. And so I told my mom, I was like, "Mom, like I can't do biology at a Christian university. Like, it's just not gonna work," you know. But uh, eventually. While I was applying, I was really impressed by um, the universities that I applied to, which included um, Houghton College, which is a Wesleyan Christian university. Uh, they were just really helpful and really kind. And so I ended up going there and I really didn't regret it. I think in many ways um, it did work for the best. Um, I would say like even within my university professors, like there is a good spectrum of like what they believe in you know, on the topic of like evolution per se, or some right. other you know, creationism, some other hot topic that I don't know how hot it is these days, but when I was growing up, um, that was like what Christians want to talk about all the time, but right. uh, hopefully so, it's sort of tampered down a bit, but yeah, go ahead. So uh, just some follow-up question. So you, well, just summarize first. Um, so your parents were involved in your somewhat in your decision uh, in, in the, 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 play, the university that you go to. Uh, God, uh, God also sovereignly didn't allow you to go into places like in Hong Kong, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, which narrowed down the country you go to. Uh, but you knew that you wanted to study science. And you, yeah, you, I knew that I wanted to study science. Mm -hmm. And you and knew also, that you there want was to a be part of me that did want to go mm -hmm. at science and medical field, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So, so, so that kind of narrows down or help you decide on what university to apply to, um, right? Yeah. Okay. So oh, that's the how other you... thing was also. I was... <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, the other thing was also, and I actually did apply to some non, like a Baylor University, which is you know big secular university. I think the other thing that I was looking for was a small college, uh, which I think Kendra did cover earlier. Um, I think Houghton's only 1,100 students. I really enjoyed um, the amount of one-on-one -on -one time. Like a lot of my classes were only four students, five students, and that's mm -hmm. really valuable, especially in science fields, because um, time on the equipment is is very precious. Right, and and I knew a little bit that you because you uh, you had a small college, you also end up to be at, with a very good professor, right? And and mm -hmm. you were you were being an assistant to him, and that led to you going to uh, your master degree and PhD, right? Would that would is that fair? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Summary. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the only correction is I didn't get a master's degree. I went, I went straight into my doctorate. Uh, but yeah, I think like because I was at, at a small university, um, you know, there's only so many people to choose from. So um, it's pretty, I guess it's easier to get a teaching assistant position. Um, and, you know, a lot of professors ask me like, oh, do you want to do your honor seminar with me? Um, whereas at a bigger school, it might be harder to get their attention. Right. And then uh, the professor played some role in uh, getting you into Mayo Clinic or, or not? Uh, yeah, I guess on that topic, I would say no, actually. I think my professor actually, at the time, I don't know why, but was actually being like, mm, I don't know, that might be shooting, shooting a little too high. Uh. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I applied anyway. I know. It, and it you got in now? Huh? I would say. <laughs> I did. I did get in, and and so that that was a good surprise. They were supportive after that. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Great. Okay. Uh, let's move on to uh, Alicia first, then Rachel. Same question. Uh, you you touch on a little bit, but maybe elaborate a little bit more. Yeah. So earlier I mentioned that I did A levels for law here in Penang. So why I chose it? Cause um. I went to cheap, just eight thousand. So that's why. Uh, Ali Ali really Alicia, Alicia, uh, can you turn off your video? Yeah. I think the connection not very good. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh. Can you hear me better now? Yes. Can you can you start again? Sorry. Okay. So like I mentioned earlier, um, I did uh, law for a year at A-level. So um, I chose to study in Penang because it's way cheaper than going to KL. Like only around 8,000. Mm -hmm. And then, um, but I found out that law really isn't for me because you have to memorize a lot of dates and <laughs> you just can't memorize dates and it's just not going to happen with being a lawyer. <laughs> and so, my mom was basically like, um, I don't think this intense studying thing is for you, you know. I think you should do mass comm. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I've never been like, I never had any goals like growing up, like any specific ambition. Just like wing it kind of thing. Yeah, don't learn from me, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so my mom was like, why not you do mass comm first? I like to talk a lot. And I like English and writing. So, like, yeah, okay, I'll do it. So, um, I did KU for two years. And honestly, I wouldn't recommend that uni because um, there isn't really an academic focus. And the lecturers weren't really, like, well versed in their subjects. So, yeah, I, I didn't really do a lot of research for choosing my uni. It was a mistake. So, I definitely say, like, look properly into the uni and not only to the course but like the course outline to me see like what it really goes into um so then um because mine was a two plus one uh, and they had a twinning with Northumbria University so uh, I went there for a year my final year and 
weirdly enough, like a lot of my friends went to the UK to party <laughs> and like, you know, have holidays. But I think like by the grace of God, like I went there and found a really good Christian fellowship. So uh, I actually started studying when I went there. It was weird. <laughs> and it was, I was actually at one of the top party schools in the UK. It was like number eight top party schools. But uh, yeah, thank God I didn't really get into that whole scene. Although I did try it out a little bit. <laughs> Must admit. Yeah, so um, then I came back and then started working after a year. But it wasn't easy to get a job. Yeah, and we want to talk about that later, right? Yep, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Th- thank you, Alicia. Um, okay, Rachel, how about you? Uh, <laughs> so the question was, how did I get to, how did I get to this university, right? Right. Um, so I really missed Japan at the time, and I knew that I wanted to come back. But I was very specific. Like, I didn't want to study in Japanese. Like, I, my course had to be in English or I probably wouldn't want to come back. And <laughs> wanted to do um, something along the lines of business. And the way I chose that was the process of elimination. I don't like science. I mean, at that time, I didn't like science. I didn't like art. I didn't like a couple things. <laughs> um, so... In the end, I'm just like, okay, I think there's only business. But I was still really, like, thinking about it. Um, but actually, now that I have, like, studied business and I've studied accounting and all this stuff, I realized it's actually not that bad. Um, the problem was everything was in Bahasa at that time, and I didn't really like studying those subjects in Bahasa. So for me, that was the reason why I didn't like it. Um, so how did I come to pick this school? Very interesting. I wasn't the one who found it. It was my aunt. Um, she sent the link to the family group chat. She was like, hey, Rachel, like, this school got scholarship, you know? And like, oh, they got a business course in English. Maybe you should try it. I was like, okay. So I applied for it. And I was granted a full scholarship to go. And I was like, okay, well. Then, like, <laughs> I just applied to one university. And I just ended up going there. Um, however... <laughs> When I came here, I found out it was a Buddhist school. <laughs> and very interesting that I was like, I was like, wait, like this doesn't seem very like, hmm. Because I had a lot of um required classes. So one of the required classes was to study about Buddhism. And I had to attend uh like the like a ceremony or something like that, um, once a year, um, or something like that. Um, and so I was a bit unsure, to be honest. Like at first, I was like, Lord, is this really where you want me to be? Um, and I actually tried transferring. I tried to transfer to another school, um, but God closed that door. And that was when I was sure that God wanted me to be in the school. And so I just did my best. Um, I had like a really good score in Buddhism, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so like through learning Buddhism, I was able to understand how they think and like why they choose that and what's the difference and all that. So that was helpful, I think. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Actually. Okay. So so can I ask you a question? Um, actually, any one of you can answer. I, I only heard David say that her, his parents actually was involved in helping. How about the rest of you? You kind of just ignore your parents and do whatever you feel like doing? My parents were pretty supportive. Right. Um, did, did they help you choose or you kind of did all the hard work and they just approved? Uh, well, the thing is, I only applied to one school. <laughs> there were many choices. I don't recommend this, by the way, but I only applied to one school. But my parents were very supportive in a sense where uh, if I didn't get the full scholarship, they would have sponsored me. Mm. So, um, yeah. yeah. Okay. How about Alicia, Ben, and Kendra? Did, um, did your parents play any role in helping you pick the field of study or where to go? 
uh, for me, my parents have always been really chill. Like, let me choose, you know, whatever path I want. So, yeah, my mom just suggested, like, why don't you try MassCom? But not, like, in a pushy way. So, mm-hmm. like, yeah, okay, good idea. So, yeah. So, my okay. dad just, okay, yeah, I, I'll just pay the money. <laughs> <laughs> How about Ben and Kendra? Um, for me, I would say, yeah, my mom definitely played a big role. Like, sorry, mom, I didn't mention you earlier, but um, uh, first it was more like the field I'm picking because I was really open to hospitality because of my uncle. He, he was in that field. My mom was in that field before the lab, before, like, you know, before what, what she's doing now, you know? So I was like, wow, why not explore it? And she was the one who kind of discouraged me and said, hey, like, this is the reality of life, you know, like, like your Sundays are pretty much gone being an entry level person. And she just talked to talk, talk it through and, and, and make me understand it. But at the same time with my dad and my mom, like the financial, like they gave me like a, what they can help me with all four years. And that was like my target to hit under. And I applied to different colleges and the college I picked was like the, 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 the lowest, cheapest with, with the most like scholarship they can offer. And every year I could apply for more grants. That's why I also picked that to them because I don't want to get the, it's not, yeah. I mean, going to, when you choose to study more like, like, and financial is, is an, is like your money is a factor. You definitely have to choose wisely to them, you know? So okay. I'm, I'm thankful for parents. Yeah. Okay. Great. How about, how about Kendra? Um, yeah, my parents, I'm just trying to remember how that all went down. Uh, yeah, my parents' <laughs> involvement, um, we went and like toured universities together. They had both come with me when we toured. Um, so we went to, I think, three or four, right? yeah, three or four different colleges and I applied to, I don't know, maybe five. And so then we all just talked it through of what I want to do. And that was back when I wanted to do art. So I was, you know, primarily like art. My mom's an artist. She runs an art studio. Um, she owns her own business. And so we were just talking things through and then, but they were very supportive. And- mm-hmm. Okay, great. It sounded to me like quite a few of you actually knew what you would like to study or by the process of elimination figure out what <laughs> you would apply to. Um, before I go to the panelists, can I ask uh, the, the audience, uh, the, the young people, how many of you know what you want to study? Can you raise your hand if you know? If you don't know, can you raise your hand? <laughs> I can't see your hand, huh? Or can you guys just unmute and say, who, who, who knows what you're going to study? Okay, Dylan, you, you kind of like did this. What does that mean? Dylan Chu. Kind of. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. They, they work this Wait. They, they work this What? Huh? Hello? Hello? Hey Dylan, so you were saying you you kinda you 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 know a little bit what you may want to study? Yeah. What 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 is that? Uh I'm thinking about the field with uh, uh econ okay. accounting and finance. Okay. 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 With a combination of either two of them. Okay. I think it is. Wait, I'm okay. Who 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 has someone speaking at the background? I think that might be Myra. Okay. Um, okay, uh, anyone else know what they plan to study? I guess most most people don't at this point, yeah? Uh, okay. I also have some sort of, I okay. kind of know what I want to do, but I'm not really sure yet. Uh, can you, can wanna, you share? Yeah, like I'm thinking I'm doing like, like something like Dylan finance and stuff like that. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to do something related to people because I like, you know, interacting with people, I guess. So, uh, or, and maybe do something related to analyzing like business analysis and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. One of those things. So, yeah. Okay. That's what I want to do generally. Uh, yeah. How about the rest of you? Well, I mean, I'm not 100% sure, but broadly, I might try to like study music. 
Okay, great, or great. Some form of it. Okay, okay. Uh, how about Dylan Tan, Tewu, Nan, Ashley, and Uzani? Dylan Tan, you want to go first? Oh, Tewu, Tewu, sorry. Sure. Okay, Dylan. So, um, all right. Well, I've always had an interest in humanities, like the geography, the sociology, the history type. But um, so I pursued those subjects for my um, secondary education, and I do well for those subjects. I also do well in for economics, but I'm not I'm not the greatest at that. <laughs> Caleb might say I I'll, I'll go for the pharma subjects. Caleb says that's your own. Yeah, but I have a, a bigger, I have a more keen interest in in the humanities side of things, so I might pursue that for my higher education. Okay, great, great. How about Teu? I have no clue what I'm going to do in the future, and I'm still working on trying to find something to do. Okay, okay. How about Nan and Uzani and Ashley? And I guess also Myra. Ashley, you want to start first? Ashley? Oh, can't unmute. Okay, never mind. Uh, we go to other people. Myra, Nan, or Uzani? Yuvashi. Yuvashi. Yuvashni? Okay, never mind. I, I guess. Um, okay, let's move on then. Um, Ashley was able to unmute just now. Okay, Ashley, go ahead. Uh, I, I'm also not very sure, but uh, I think I'm, I'll pursue law. Okay, okay. Maybe you can, you can ask Alicia <laughs> privately her experience with law. Um, oh, no. okay. Yeah. Um, um, I, I have. Uh, one advice to some of you, uh, whatever that you're thinking of doing, uh, it may be helpful to talk to your parents. Uh, they may be able to give you some insight or like some of these panelists here, you can, uh, if you, you can talk to them, if you want to their contact, I can share with you. Uh, it may be also good that because the reason to talk to your parents, they may know people in the field that you are interested in. Uh, so, for example, uh, uh, if you want to study law, it may be helpful that your dad will know some lawyer friends. They can uh, maybe take you in to, to do a, a one-month job or, or even to just talk to you if they, they can't give you a job. Uh, so, they, 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 you understand what you're getting into. Okay, I think that would be helpful. Uh, that's my suggestion. Yeah. Of course, you can research online and everything, but uh, good to talk to people with experience. Okay, so let's go on to the next. Uh, I want to ask this question. Um, how did you, a lot of you share that you, you, you want to study something. How did you end up choosing that? How involved was, uh, do you just look at what you like or did you uh, involve anyone else or involve, did you talk to God? Um, yeah. Maybe we'll start with David to put you on the spot. Sure. Um, yeah. oh, no problem. Um, I wanted to actually further echo a point you made just earlier. Um, I think especially like for later in life, um, unfortunately, I think, and maybe it depends on the country, but I think like, especially in the US and I think definitely in Malaysia as well, that in many ways, like sometimes it's who you know, not what you know. And so like definitely like leveraging, or sorry, using your contacts, whether it's your parents, your church friends, your own friends, you know, their parents, um, trying to figure out, you know, who is doing what you want to do and being able to talk to them and ask them like, how did you get where you are is very important. Uh, the other thing, um, I am very disappointed that no one is interested in science. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, but Chris is um, interested in science. science, but I don't think I want to oh. job. Chris, uh, Christopher okay, is interested fair. in science. I took AP okay, physics. Well, last we can year. talk. 
I'm taking AP Bio this year, so maybe. <laughs> well, there's not, a lot of fields and there's a lot of things to do. Just now another person said science, right? Is that Jerome? No. It's Elliot. Elliot. Okay. Sorry. Okay, David, go ahead. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I was going to say, I think there's one one of the, I think one of the, the the, the students was saying that they were interested in like the humanities, uh, which I also want to commend. I think that's a very interesting field and good field that most parents are pretty wary about, right? Like studying geography, studying sociology. Um, I think um, uh, being a part of academia is difficult, but I think it's very re rewarding being able to study and put together, um, you know, these the sort of studies that like other people haven't done before, being able to write books and scholarly articles. So yeah, I wanted to commend that. And then back to how I chose my top, my uh, sub field of study, um, I would say ever since I was a kid, I was really interested in science. Um, I'd sort of swallow up anything that had to do, wasn't as interested in space, but anything to do with like nature, anything to do with plants, human body, I was always interested in. I also thought I wanted to be a doctor for the longest time uh, because I really loved the missionary doctors that came to church and spoke about their um, ministry to um, sort of indigenous communities or uh, poorer communities around Southeast Asia. So that's sort of how I chose biology. Uh, but then later in college, I decided I didn't want to be a professor. Sorry, I didn't want to be a doctor. So then I went into research instead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did, did any one of you um, actually talk to God to find out or, or God kind of, or just, or as you were maneuvering through your life, uh, God kind of navigate you through it or did, did anyone? I would say personally for myself, um, communicating with God did happen, um, not on a subject field matter, but definitely like where I went to school. And I've seen sort of like God's hand sort of guiding me. Um, actually, I have sort of a story when I was on vacation in Hong Kong, and I was just thinking about where to go for college. Um, and that was the time I was waiting for Hong Kong University. But I just heard a voice telling me that, like just having the name Houghton repeated again and again. And I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I think I need to go there. Like, I don't know why. Mom's like, all right, you know, pray about it. You know, wait for a week. If you still feel the same way, we'll, um, you know, we'll send in our acceptance um, of their offer. And after a week, I still was like, I need to go there. I don't know why, but I need to go there. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, that's my story for that. So, the spirit in you kind of prompting you and, and nudging you along to go to... The university that you end up at even though mm -hmm. at that time you were focusing on getting to hong kong you because obviously can you, you know that's right yeah because hong kong university was closer to home you know my dad you know it, it's a very it's one of the top schools in asia and it was also a medical program which is what i wanted to do but right. at the same time i just had this voice telling me to go here so okay how about the rest I, I can share. Okay. I can say it's, uh, I definitely have to say like, yeah, you're praying and deciding, but like David's like similar to David to not like specifically, like I want to just choose business, but it's more like uh, where God wants to lead me in terms of going to the U S at that point. And, and my mentor just sharing how like, like, like that's because sometimes of course we desire an audible voice, you know, like for David's example, that was great. Right. It's like not audible, but, that, that leading and I think what my mentor shared that um if those those who know him this Mr. Cura then okay like he he shared how like if you are living in a way where you're being obedient to the Lord even though you're unsure of where God's will is like you can also trust that your next path is God's will as you continue to trust in him and 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 pray and and seek him because sometimes the path is just not written out nicely or whatever but mm -hmm. like but really like for us just to keep obeying him and and trust that hey this is our path and mm -hmm. even before i flew to the u.s to to choose this school i was still unsure i'm like 
I don't know anything about this school. Like, like it's so unsure, so hard to move. Then, then you're part of this story too. So the day when we had the part, a graduation party at Fettus Park and Dalat. And one lady asked you like, hey, like, where is this young man going to college? And, and you said, oh yeah, Nayak. And then, then she said, oh wow, my brother works there. And he's actually my, my, my main professor and he actually works in the whole end now, you know, like, so it was just through that confirmation, like, wow, like, like what the, the coincidence, like his sister, like being a missionary, like, like working in this area and, and, and being in this party, I don't even know her at all because it's mutual friends. And I think just through like these signs that were God, God telling me like, hey, Ben, like you can trust in me, like, like, like go forward, you know, don't, don't fear, you know, I think that that gave me more courage, like, okay, I, I can go and, and not be mm -hmm. so leave home, you know. Yeah. Right. I think one thing that Ben shared is that in, in our journey of, uh, with God, sometimes we, we have to take the step by faith, you know, and, and trust, but obviously desire to obey him, ask him, and, and so, but, as what Ben said, not every, oftentimes he doesn't audibly tell us here. Uh, but what Ben is sharing is that he fully trusted God that whatever step he take is in God's plan. And then as he take those small steps of faith, um, based on the circumstances and his passion to do what, uh, God actually confirmed it. For him that he's on the right path by by what he just shared in that story just now where this uh, lady confirmed right okay anyone else alicia rachel or kendra alicia yeah um yeah and i actually during that time you know i wasn't really walking like according to the will of god so i didn't even pray about which college to go to what to study so um later i might share during the job portion but like yeah so you definitely should pray before you okay know, the okay thank you we'll come i'll come back to you first huh, when we talk about the job <laughs> rachel uh so you asked about like how we pick our classes right uh the like, fuel of study yeah oh fuel of study um so in my first year of university, I had a class where we needed to decide or at least think about what we wanted to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And I guess they wanted us to choose classes based on that. But when I was thinking and I was really thinking, thinking, the only thing I could think of that I really wanted to do was to be a mom. And so I legit just realized, like, oh, my dream is to be a mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I had to like explain this to people because everyone's like, is being a mom even a job kind of thing? Uh, but it is a job. I'm pretty sure it is. And um, I think I was remembering the movie's mom. Um, I was just really inspired by how much a mom can actually influence their children. And I was very inspired by that. And I was like, I want to be that kind of mom. Like, I want to be like a really good mom. And um. I actually, a lot of the things that I do after that were based on that motivation. Mm -hmm. um, and I was very fortunate that God was just allowing me to explore very, very different opportunities, honestly. Like God just opened doors for me to experience writing like policy papers and submitting it to the government and like um, entrepreneurship, trying how to create a startup. It's like, it's just amazing like how God just, let me try them all out for me to know that I don't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> and amazing thing about God is like, sometimes you, you ask him like, oh Lord, I really, really want this. And God like, God's like, okay, I'll let you try. And then you figure out like, okay, actually I don't really want this. <laughs> um, but God is very gracious and he allowed me to try that during university. So, you know, like university is a really good time to try out things. And especially when you see that God allows you to do that, then I, I would, you know, encourage you to just go for it. Yeah. So, so Rachel basically shared a, a different side of, of, of similar to what Ben, but what Rachel is sharing is that she, she took steps of trying things and, and our God is so generous and so gracious to us that he, he, he wouldn't slam the door at us 
and he will actually entertain us, allowing us to, to pursue what we would like to pursue. But God obviously knew exactly what the right job for or right field of study for Rachel is. And, and he, he actually, what Rachel was able to see is that how God helped her rule out the rest and guide her into where she is now. Right? And, 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 and um, you know, you want to be a mom, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can ask Janice, I, <laughs> Auntie Janice. And also, I think your, 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 this next job in the kindergarten, I mean, that is related, you know? Yeah, your... learning how to be a mom without having kids. <laughs> <laughs> Head start. Yeah. Okay. Any question from, 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 the, from the young people, the youth, that you want to ask anyone? Okay. Um, no, no one in the chat, huh, Auntie Janice? No. Okay. Uh, you guys have no question. Huh? So you must already figure out how to talk to God and how to define a, a career and all those. Huh? <laughs> I have more question than you guys. So please, please ask question uh, free for you. I mean, this is a perfect opportunity to ask any question. We're all, tr I mean, trying to figure out, you know, how to, how to, how to move forward and how to understand God's will for you. Okay. Um, so now I want to transition into jobs. Okay. And uh, Alicia was really anxious to want to share this. So I want to pass that time to her. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, hang on. Uh, Kendra didn't share. Do, do you have anything to add about the, before we move? We can move on because we, Ben and I have to leave in like a okay. minute or so. We can move oh. on. Okay, Alicia, sorry, let me pause. Can I let Kendra share first and then we come to you? Okay, because they have to leave at nine. So Ben and Kendra, the next is like your job. Uh, how, how, how did you end up there and how involved is God? How involved is your parents in that? Right. So it's kind of interesting. So I studied intercultural studies and um, I really wanted initially to like go overseas and possibly like teach English or something and then I ended up beating Ben and then it was like all right he had a job in the U.S. that I was looking for a job and then God really opened up this door to um, the local nonprofit I was working at I had a connection through a friend and it was still in like ministry um, so I've worked there for two years and it was just a great experience and it really um, like sometimes like college it teaches you the skills but you don't really find out if you like something until you're actually like working in that field so I really found out that I like love administration I love organization and I love um like Excel spreadsheets and just like keeping things like really orderly and organized which is a lot of my job at uh, what I do at my nonprofit. and so now moving on to Johnson Johnson I another total I felt like God thing like I wasn't looking for a job I was talking to one of my friends and she was just talking about like, um, and uh, one of my Christian friends, and she was talking about her job and how they're looking for somebody. And she's like, maybe you should just apply. Like, it's a great interview experience. Like, even if you don't get it, like you said, you're kind of interested in like moving on because there's not really much in your current job for you. And I was like, okay, yeah, I'll apply. I'll just see what happens. And so I ended up applying, got an interview, didn't hear anything for three weeks. And then um, the lady, I got a call saying, you, we'd like to offer you a position. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is crazy. <laughs> so, um, I, I never have worked in project management before, but it is very administrative. So I think that is definitely going to be something that I'm going to enjoy. But like I said, every job is different. And college I mean they teach you the skills and like they're teaching you about the subject but till you actually work in like that field it kind of like not really totally sure and I would definitely encourage any of the, you that can to get internships that are related to your major because then you can really tell like okay this is something I like or maybe I want to redirect this a little bit um yeah okay uh, uh, go ahead I'm going to say something no Ben Ben go ahead so I'll point out the internship part is a good point. And I guess it's like a more math view to it. Like, it's definitely like, depending on what field you do, because if you're more into the scientific field like David, like he 
Now, of course, you will speak for it, but like some skills that you learn from university would translate to your job. You know, like my accounting mm -hmm. job, uh, my accounting like 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 career definitely like learning debits and credits helped me in my field. You know, so it really depends on like if you if you need to do law or what, right? So, but I would say the big part of it through university, maybe being on your own too, you learn to be more in a, like I'm still learning to be an adult. You know, like I say, oh, even though Ben is young adult now, you know, married too, but we're all learning and, 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 and it's different. So like definitely that is also a milestone for you to grow, to be yourself and to find what God has in store for you. Because sometimes when you're in your parents' house, you, you, you just, not say you function the way you are, but you don't know, you, you, when you're put out there as a seed, you just grow, right? And you see what your potential is. So I think that's a big part of it. And in terms of my job, it, the more personal story to it, because Karen and I were dating really seriously. And I, I just, I, I, I through different like I guess we can share maybe throughout the different sessions but like I'm like wow like she's the one I want to be with I was trying to I was trying to get a job before get an offer before uh graduation because I want to make sure that I can secure something because being an international student is really hard like if you don't get a job within three months you need to get out of the country like really strict you know so I applied like hundreds of different applications just any website just put my name out there but long behold like it was just through um someone that I knew and, and and my prof it was my professor's really good student too, way 10 years ahead of me. And I just reached out to her and said, hey, like, can you give me any resume or interview advice? And she said, hey, Ben, like, just give me a resume. Then, like, then the next day, a recruiter reached out to me and said, hey, like, we, you got your name in. We only have tax available, but, but do you want to do an internship with us? I'm like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, but he said, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll interview you. Uh, you can come into the office and then we'll see how it goes. And, and I... The next, the next, within a, within a week, I went in for the interview, and the next day I received a call that hey, we're gonna offer you this job, this this salary, everything. I'm like, wow, like like that's done. Like even before graduating, like I got a job in the fall, I think. So, I, so I, I quote unquote secured a job maybe six months before graduation. So that was like, God just like 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 affirming me because it was super stressful. I told Kendra like Kendra like if I don't get a job by December, like I will go even harder because. Because if you wanna, if I wanna stay in the U.S., you know, like I think this is what I need to do. So I was really like gung ho about applying everything, and definitely uh, thankful for for Lord, the Lord leading me in different connections, like like making me meet like professor and being her TA. You know, so if it wasn't for that, like like David said, like it's not how much you know, but the people that you know. Like like if I didn't know them and I didn't, I didn't even, I, I didn't like the person who referred to the job, like, like put my name in, like I didn't know her because I wanted the job. You know, I wanted to get get my name in but it's just through friends and and she just said hey ben just give me something you know and she put she put herself out there for me and i've learned that if i have the opportunity to put myself out there for someone else like and they show the potential like that thing that helps them okay yeah. thank you ben well i also noticed that uh both you and kendra uh well first especially you ben uh, you 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 are a lot of you are guided by kendra huh? Like your coffee shop, assigning the shift, uh, getting a job in the U.S., <laughs> we, which we will hear about that in a later session about marriage later on. <laughs> okay, uh, I, it's already nine. I know Ben and Kendra have to leave. Um, yeah. Feel free to drop Thank off you, anytime. Everybody. Yeah. Okay. Enjoy your time. Have a good evening. Bye. Right. Okay. Uh, let's. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's come come back to here. Um, Alicia. Yeah, sorry, what's the question again? <laughs> uh, job, job. How did you, 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 you were excited, you want to share about how God played a role in your job? Um, it's more of how he let me out of my job. <laughs> okay, okay, go ahead. Um... So staying in Penang for like 20 something years, my goal was just to get out. <laughs> like I just didn't want to stay at home anymore. So like die, die, I was just like applying to jobs and like, you know, thinking of different countries to go to or like KL. And um, so uh, I, I did this random job at the beginning, but um, I got the opportunity to go to Genting. So it was really random, but um, my friend recommended me. So I actually stayed 
on the mountain for like almost two years, which is kind of crazy because there's nothing to do there. <laughs> so I think when you're looking for a job, like you should think about what you like to do rather than the money. And I think I got like really sidetracked along the way. Like the more I work, the more I started thinking about climbing the corporate ladder. So I think it's important to like, to not lose sight of God and, you know, not to like drift your focus on like all these material things because in the corporate world, you know, people start to compete and stuff. So it's very easy to like, oh, I want to get promoted and this and that. So yeah, I started to like, so this greed started to get into my heart. And um, so, uh, but I left because my boss was kind of crazy. I was working till like 2 a.m. sometimes. <laughs> and um, so then I did another job at, um, you know, Big Bad Wolf? They have a book sale. Yeah, so I was doing that. But uh, I got retrenched because of COVID. And um, yeah, so that's happened to a lot of people, I think, now. And then I still went back to Genting because, again, I really wanted to stay out of Penang. And it wasn't for the right intentions. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was just stubborn. <laughs> Don't want to stay a family. So, um, yeah, I guess, like, uh, God, like, like Rachel, you know, God is like, um, you know, I really want to do this, so just let me do this kind of thing. So he, he, he gave me the job back at Genting, you know, and um, so uh, how I got out of the job is kind of a grandfather story. <laughs> like, <laughs> um, so I was there for about five months, and then um, so uh, I've actually been healthy like my whole life, never been hospitalized. So I suddenly got like really sick um, in January. So, um, like, I had no choice but to take leave and come back to Penang. And then um, I was still hoping, you know, to go back to KL eventually. But, like, I kept praying about it. And then God just told me, like, you have to just, like, surrender and just, like, leave. Because, like, that's not where, you know, I want it to be. So, I eventually, I just, like, submitted everything to God and just, like, you know what, from now on, I'm just going to pray for, like, where you want me to go. So, mm. I think it's, like, way better this way. <laughs> like, <laughs> don't, don't fight him. He knows what's best for you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alicia. Okay, uh, Rachel? Um, I guess... Uh, I actually do want to say something like, yes, like sometimes, um, like, so I, I told God like, oh, there are a couple things I want to experience. Right. And then God allows me to do that. But then at the end, I figured out that that's not what I want to do. Um, and I think even through those experiences, even though at the end of the day, I realized I didn't want to do that. I could still see that God was leading me towards something, um, that, I don't know how to explain it, but the experiences that I had were not futile in a sense. Um, even now, the job that I'm doing, it's kind of related in the previous experiences that I had. Um, so I would want to encourage all of you, like, don't be afraid. Um, even if you, you think you want something and God allows you to do it, um, just try it out. And if you figure out that's not what you want to do, I wouldn't fear like because God has a good plan um, God has a plan and he knows you know the choices you're already going to make even before you make them so um, yeah I personally wouldn't fear too much like you I think because I had that a lot like after one experience I realized oh no this is not what I want to do what should I do um, and then I just run up to like other choices and so after every choice I just figured out I'd this is not what I want to do. And then I start panicking. Um, but God has been like really gracious and really kind. And he's just been um, very patiently showing me <laughs> where to go. Um, so yeah, um, 
what I'm doing now is totally unrelated. Uh, so I studied like business and finance and I ended up teaching kids right now. <laughs> uh, so um, ha what happened was I actually, I was interning at um, a corporate company and I didn't really enjoy the experience that I had over there. I think just for me personally, I couldn't handle office politics very well. Um, and so after that internship, I was like, I don't think I can work with adults. <laughs> so that kind of narrowed my options quite a bit, honestly. Um, but then I also realized, um, actually, since I was in university, second year, I've always uh, uh, volunteered in the children, children's, children's church in the current church that I'm going to. And I didn't realize this, but I really enjoy just like playing with the little kids and really like talking to them and interacting with them. And I think God was just encouraging me to pursue that. And that was how I got into the current field. And God was really nice because I ended up getting an internship, even though I had like zero experience or even zero education about um, early child education, but God allowed me to get into an internship. And I had like a crash course on early childhood education which really helped me to um, do pretty okay with at my current job now. Yeah, so, you know, God always provides <laughs> my conclusion. That's fantastic. Uh, did, did, uh, David, did you share yet? Not yet, right? Uh, no, um, I, think, I think it's harder for me because um, I, I've been in school this whole time and I just got an adult job that I haven't started. So um, I would say um, I got my doctorate in science and I was trying to figure out whether to stay in academia or find an industry position. Um, I think for myself, I knew that at least from all the people I know in academia, a lot of them are pretty, not very happy. Um, it, it's just sort of hard uh, academia can be. Um, it's very isolating. Um, and I feel bad saying this. I don't want to discourage anyone from pursuing a doctorate, but um, it, it can be pretty tough, but it's very rewarding if you really like doing research and setting your own time. That's that's something that's really good. Um, very good for people with families, especially. Um, you know, you can come in at any time of day. I have friends that just work night shifts uh, because of their families. So um, anyway, so I wanted something with more structure. So that's why I applied for an industry position which I thankfully uh, got. So when are you starting your, your job? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my start date is 27th of September. Just like Ben, like being international can be very tricky. Um, there's a lot of laws, which I think are fair, um, that sort of put in place to make it a little more difficult so that um, domestic, um, I guess, employees are... are, are um, are prioritized over international. So um, I still have some papers that hopefully they come on time so that I can be authorized to work. Um, applying for jobs was also pretty difficult. I mean, I did have a doctor, which was an advantage, but honestly, in science, there's a lot of doctorates out there. Thank you, David. Um, okay, I think, um, I want to open up to uh, the, you guys for any question. Anyone? Uh, Chris, you wave. Means you don't. I have no question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Okay, Auntie Janice, you have any question for, for the panelists? Um, not really. <laughs> uh, but I, I do uh, agree with Rachel. Can I also share a tiny bit about like, even though my experience is so long ago, okay. but uh, I went to university um, not knowing what I wanted to do. So I went to Canada 
Uh, and when I entered the university, I didn't know what I wanted to major in. So I just told, um, like I went into the School of uh, Arts and Science, which allow you to actually um, try out different things and like to find like what you actually want to do. Um, so at the end, I chose um, computer science. At that time, um, like my parents didn't know what computer science is. At that time, like computer, not every family has computers. So uh, the so journeys were ancient. Yeah, they weren't very supportive. But I picked it because like I um, just follow my friends and I took one of the course and I realized, oh, it's very interesting and like I and it's not that hard like in the beginning. <laughs> so like um, and I liked it. So that's how I, I um, ended up doing it. But at the end, when I graduate, like after four years, when I graduate, um, I think throughout the whole university years, it told me that like I learned that one thing I really learned that is that I don't want to go into a career in computer science. <laughs> so I like studied, finish it, but then I actually found out that I didn't like it as like, it's fun to take courses in it, but I don't want to be like working in that field for the rest of my life. Um, I, I find it would be very boring. I, like if I have to um, uh, continue in the career in that and, uh, and, God just like, well, at that time, I actually like wasn't a true believer. I think I, I kind of know God, like I pray sometimes, but uh, I wasn't seeking him for any direction or anything. I didn't think that I needed to uh, seek him in direct, like for direction or anything. So um, I kind of just follow my instinct, follow what I like. So, um, but like a job just landed in my lap kind of. Um, when I was still in Canada, like my friend that have went back to Hong Kong actually called me up and said, hey, I have this job that like, I, like I, I, I was actually don't know whether I, I actually wanted to stay in Canada, but I couldn't because I'm international student. I, my time was ticking and running out. I need to move out. Um, so then my friend called me and said, hey, I have this job that's really good for you. Like, I think like it really suits you. You should come back now. <laughs> so I was like, oh, really? So I quickly packed up my stuff and I went back to Hong Kong. So, and yeah, so that's how I took up my first job. And um, which has nothing at all to do with my, um, like what I studied. But like, of course, the boss hired me because of, um, uh, because I know computer stuff, like because I, uh, I actually took a, like a degree in uh, computer science, um, because like at that time the people start to know like start to move into the computer world, so like the the um, boss actually wanted to like um, move the whole company into like more computerized like system and all those. So he actually um, hired me because like of that, but like actually my job is more admin job instead of um, like really like computer science or any programming or anything. So yeah, so, but God is good. I think like when I look back now, um, actually I had three jobs um, after like two other jobs after work, after work. Um, and they like, and God actually gave me those jobs um, and all those jobs. I never actually went for a real interview or have to send in any letters to apply for jobs, but God just kind of throw those jobs into my lap and, uh, and they are all very interesting. And yeah, so like when I look back, like, even though I wasn't, seeking his guidance or anything but like he was there like steering me and also like the jobs that he gave me are things that I'm really interested in so I was like really thankful when I look back to it and yeah so like uh, and and also like 
even though we may from time to time make wrong decisions, but like we don't have to fear that God will turn his back to us. God is always there ready to catch us when we make a wrong decision. So yeah, that's uh, just what I want to encourage you all. Don't be fearful when you like try out things. Do try out different things. If you have the interest in those things, um, it could be like the, all those interests that you have can very likely be what God actually put in your heart, like a, a desire, like to, a guidance for the rest of your life. So, yeah. Thank you, Janice. Um, I also, we also have Nicholas, which I haven't really introduced you guys. Uh, he didn't join us last week. Uh, Nicholas, are you there? Yeah, Nicholas will be one of the facilitator too, but uh, maybe we can hear from Nicholas a little bit how, how you ended up at seminary. You want to share that or too long a story next time? Nicholas, you're muted. How much time do we have? Uh, we, we actually pass time, so but okay. if you can do a brief one, you can, or we can delay yeah. it the next time also can. Uh, yeah, maybe just a brief one. Uh, okay, um, <clears throat> how I end up here? <laughs> wow, what a fantastic story. Uh, actually, yeah, I graduated 2011 uh, in human resource uh, development. So um, actually, I don't like that course. <laughs> <laughs> That's not my first choice, actually. Actually, I, I, I choose another uh, field. But, but then um, I just finish it and then uh, I, I go to, to work. And yeah, I go to HR field and uh, quite a few years. Um, but yeah. Um, maybe this is uh, like cliche to some people, you know, the calling of God, we want to say all that, but, but it's really true that um, it's, it's been a long time in my heart that uh, actually I want to serve him, you know, even before uh, I go to university, but, but just, I just try to suppress it. And then I, I try to like negotiate with God that Lord, I, it's no problem that I, I can serve you and and still work like like everybody else you know uh, it doesn't have to be full time um, like Paul I I I I I argue with God and said look at Paul Paul also do uh, another job like you know he he's a pen maker and then yeah and then he can preach and all that but then. Yeah, that's how I, you know, arguing and negotiating. <laughs> but as time goes by, the struggle become, uh, each, every year it's, you know, it's still like more heavier and heavier. And then until my pastor also approached me and said, you know, I think you should consider to go to seminary. I said, oh, no, 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 I said. <laughs> but then it, uh, the next year, the same question again, and it's, it's feel like something that the, the question is always in my mind, in my heart, you know, until uh, at the point that I said, yeah, uh, I think I, I, I want to stop, uh, you know, running around, uh, hiding here and there and doing all the kind of things. So, yeah, so that's sort of version of it <laughs> thank you nicholas i think uh any more question from the group before we end tonight i i hope this is uh uh you find it helpful tonight um that that you can hear from people that uh gone through the same path as you did um, some gone through it long, long time ago, <laughs> like Auntie Janice and me, uh, but some most recent. Uh, we also have a very diverse field of interest, and, uh, which is good, and country. 
So um, uh, let me pray and we'll close tonight and uh, I will see you guys next week. Okay. Father Lord, we thank you for this session. We thank you for each and every young person here. Every life is precious to you. Every individual here is personally called by you, handpicked by you to be in your family, uh, handpicked by you to know you. And Lord, you have great plans for them, Lord. Uh, they may just be trying to figure out things, uh, where, whether to go left or right to, or to go straight forward. But we trust that your hands will be with them. You will help them decide. And that when they do decide to step out in faith, this is my prayer, Lord, that you help them feel confident that they are walking in your plans and do not doubt and trust that you, you will walk with them through all of it all. Thank you, Father, for your precious love for each one of us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.